Here's problem number 88 from the 2012 AP Calc AB exam. Uh, they do provide us with a diagram here, so that's kind of nice. Uh, they say that a person who is six feet tall is walking from the base of a street light along a straight path at a rate of four feet per second. So the person is six feet tall, so I've labeled their height as six feet, uh, and they are walking away from the lamppost. If the height of the street light is 15 feet, so I've also got that labeled, what is the rate at which the person's shadow is lengthening? So the shadow is obviously this little length along the ground here. So what I decided to do is I decided to call X the distance between the street light and the person, S to be the length of the shadow, and then I also had the 15 and the 6 labeled from uh, the other information that we just went through. Now the question is, at what rate is the person's shadow lengthening? So we're asked to find a rate of change. We're not asked to find the length of the shadow. We're asked to figure out at what rate it is lengthening. So what we're asked to find is we're asked to find the rate of change of S with respect to time, or ds dt. One thing that we have access to in order to help us find this is we have access to the rate at which x is growing. x is growing at a rate of 4 feet per second, right? This first person's walking away from the street light at a rate of 4 feet per second. So that would not be the, the measure of x. That would be one mistake I'd be worried about seeing people make here. 4 is not x, 4 is the rate of change of x, dx dt. So what you really have here is you have a related rate situation. So a related rate situation is any situation where you have access to at least one rate and you're looking to find another unspecified rate. To solve a related rates question, you need to clearly define the rate that you're given and the rate that you're looking to find. We've already done that. And then you need to develop an equation that relates the variables within those rates. So you need to find a, rate, a way to relate x and s with one another. Now this is pretty typical of what a lot of calculus textbooks are gonna have within them as, as a, a practice problem in a related rates lesson. Uh, what we have here is we have this big outer triangle formed by the street light, x plus s across the ground, and then this hypotenuse. And then we also have a smaller inner triangle formed by the height of the person, the length of the shadow along the ground, and then this smaller portion of that bigger hypotenuse. These triangles are similar by angle angle. They both have the right angle here, and then they share this angle down in the lower corner, so obviously the other angle has to be the same. These triangles are similar. Similar triangles are gonna have proportional side lengths. And so what I did is I took the ratio of the bottom leg of the bigger triangle, which was measuring x plus s, divided by the vertical leg of the bigger triangle, 15. I equated that with the smaller, excuse me, the, the horizontal leg of the smaller triangle, which measured S units, and then divided that by the vertical measure, the vertical leg measure of that smaller triangle, which was six units. What I need to do with this is I need to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to T, because after I've done that, I'm gonna have generated a dx dt that I can put four in place of, and a ds dt that I can solve for. I don't necessarily want to take the derivative of this equation in the form that I produced it in. So what I did is I, I cross multiplied, right? Multiplied the S by the 15, distributed six into that numerator. And then I saw I could also combine like terms across the equal sign. So if I move these six S's over here with the 15 S's, I'd end up with six X equal to nine S. You don't have to simplify prior to taking your derivative, but in most instances, it's, it's beneficial to do so. Now if I take the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to t, uh, the derivative of this, if I even if I use a product rule here, 6 times x, the derivative of 6 is 0. So 0 times x plus 6 times the derivative of x with respect to t is going to give us 6 dx dt. I get a similar derivative on the right. Now what I have the opportunity to do is take 4, put it in place of dx dt. So when I do that, 6 times 4 is going to give me 24 on the left-hand side. Divide that by 9, and you should be able to match that up with one of the options. Let's see, 24 divided by 9 should be 2 point something, right? Now, the calculator is in play for this problem, so you don't have to rely on estimation in order to do this. You can type 24 divided by 9 into the calculator, and what you should see is that's going to match up with option B.